Good afternoon, everybody. Jay Douglas here with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Time to bring you another NASCAR podcast. The NASCAR season, we have four races left before the start of the playoff, but the season is going to hit a break. That's right. These drivers and teams are taking a break due to the Olympics coming up starting this Friday. So the four races left before the playoff, you've got the race at Richmond on, on August 11th. Then Michigan, August 18th, Daytona, August 24th, and the final race for the playoff is Darlington on September 1st. Let's go back and break down what we've seen since we last spoke to you. And there have been five races run since our last podcast, and we have not had a repeat winner in that span of five races. Not to mention, we had two new winners on the season overall. Joey Logano picked up his first win of the year. And Alex Bowman picked up his first win of the year. The other results following Kyle Larson winning at the Brickyard this past week. Ryan Blaney picking up another win. And then Christopher Bell. So for Christopher Bell, that is win number three for him. Ryan Blaney just picking up win number two. So now you have three drivers with three wins apiece. Benny, William Byron, and Christopher Bell. Kyle Larson, the only driver on the circuit with four wins. And you have four drivers right now in the playoff that do not have a win. They are in on points alone. That's Martin Shrek Jr., 108 points above the cut line. Ty Gibbs, 42 points to the good. Chris, Chris Buescher, 17 points in 15th place. And then Ross Chastain, the final playoff spot, seven points ahead of the cut line. The only driver that I think can mathematically make it on points is Bubba Wallace. He's minus seven to the bad. And then it goes to 83 for Chase Briscoe, 112 to Kyle Busch, then Todd Gilliland at 118. Those are the final four spots outside of the playoff. So very surprised that Alex Bowman won. He won that street race. And that's very surprising to me. I don't know if Alex Bowman is a good road racer, but I don't, I don't remember him winning last year. So the fact that he comes back after a full season of not winning and, and does that, that was very surprising to me. If Ryan Blaney had not run out of gas two times this season, he'd have four wins. He ran out of gas, lost the race against Austin Sendrick. That was at the Illinois Raceway. And then I believe he was out of gas at the Brickyard, and that caused Kyle Larson to win. That, actually, that, that race actually ended under caution, and I'm actually going to critique NASCAR here. The fact that Blaney did finish third, he wasn't out of fuel. Because if he was out of fuel, he wouldn't have finished in third. It's just he was so low on gas, he couldn't drive straight. He was jerking that car left and right, trying to keep the fuel in the tank. But I want to critique NASCAR here. I think it was Ryan Priest who spun on that last lap, the 41 car. So he spun out. They let the field take the white flag, and then threw the caution only when Priest was in immediate danger because he was sitting on the racetrack and the field was coming toward him. NASCAR had ample opportunity to throw that caution early and give us a green flag finish, or at least attempt to give us a green flag finish, because they're looking at Ryan Priest, and it, and it was pretty clear with the leaders going into turn three, he wasn't going to be able to move out the way. So you could have easily thrown the caution flag instead of the white flag in that moment. But no, they threw the white, and of course, they come back around turn two, and on the back stretch, of course, you're going to throw the, the caution. You don't want any driver to be in danger or harm's way. So I'll critique NASCAR in that regard, but you cannot take anything away from Kyle Larson. The man always finds a way to win. He always finds a way to be at the front of the field, and I'll tell you this, I think Kyle Larson is one of the luckiest drivers that I've ever seen. I can remember a handful of races when he won his championship. He shouldn't have won all those races. There were a few where he he should not have even been in the running. So he's lucky in that regard, but he's also had his bad luck. He's had his bad luck from race to race, so I won't totally say he wins because of luck. I mean, he has a, he has a ton amount of skill. I mean, let's not sugarcoat that at all. I mean, he's probably one of the best drivers on the circuit right now. If he didn't have good luck, he might not have luck at all because he gets a lot of good breaks. And, and Ryan Blaney, if Ryan Blaney had, didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. And it's going to be interesting to see who actually benefits from this two-week break. 
I'm just getting back into NASCAR. This is my third year watching it, and so I've never watched NASCAR hardcore when there's been the Olympics. I don't know if the two-week break is standard. But who's going to take advantage of that? Now, they do go to Denny's home track on August 11th at Richmond, which he could very much win. Now, he's already in the playoff. This will be the first race at Michigan this year for the Cup Series. And Michigan is a two-mile track. So it's a two-mile track. It's a longer track. So they got two long tracks, Michigan and Daytona, the short track at Richmond, and then Darlington, which looks to be a mile and a half. Brad Keselowski won the Darlington race, so you got to figure he's going to be a threat there. Joey Logano's won that Darlington track in the past. William Byron. Looking at drivers who need a win, Bubba Wallace can win at Daytona. You figure that's his best chance to win. I think Ross Chastain, he's won at Darlington. He's not in, I mean, he's in the playoff right now, but he can lock himself in. Truex could win at Darlington or Michigan, I think. I say Bubba could win at Daytona. Anybody could win at Daytona. Any of these guys below the cut line, spot 17 through spot 30, any the, anytime you go to those drafting tracks, you're going to have a good chance at winning. So Daytona is a toss-up. We mentioned Darlington. We mentioned Michigan. And Richmond, I'm not entirely sure who that would benefit. Maybe Kyle Larson. A guy that we have not seen in victory lane since the first part of the year is William Byron. When does he return to victory lane? So I think that's pretty much it for this NASCAR podcast. Again, let me know what you've been impressed with thus far this year. What do you think? What, what do you think would be the biggest surprise going into the playoff? Well, a big surprise, honestly, would be Chase Briscoe down to Daniel Hemrick, all those drivers in between. If any of those drivers win these next four races, it throws the playoff picture completely out of whack. And uh, two drivers that I want to make note of, Todd Gilliland and Michael McDowell and, and Josh Berry, those three, they have had a lot of speed recently. So keep an eye out for those guys. They can maybe pull an upset win over these next four races. I think Kyle Larson is going to be the playoff leader. Like He's going to go into the playoff with the most amount of points which means it's going to take a lot for him to get eliminated. And, of course, when you get to the playoff, if you pick up a win and you're in the playoff, you're on to the next round. doesn't matter what you do. The next race is in that round. But, again, you don't want to have bad performances because those points will add up. Even though you've locked yourself in via a win, if you let that point total decrease, you set yourself up for a bad situation when you advance to the next round. So make your opinion be known. You can do that by liking and commenting. And also, if you're not done so, please subscribe to the channel. Turn your push alerts on. Even if we forget to say what podcast we're doing next, if we get confused, if you guys don't know what's coming next, those alerts will allow you to see in real time when we do post new content and when you can have access to it. So make sure you're doing that. I can confirm this will be the final podcast of this week. Next week, we're going to look at the NFL because... Camp should be starting up very shortly, and preseason Jack should be starting up. So that, that's got that going for it. We'll take a look at who we think is going to be the seven teams in the playoff this year, like we did last year. We won't go team by team. Be on the lookout for that. And also, we're getting close to 10 games left at, during the WNBA season, so we're going to do a podcast on that next week. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. Stay safe, and God bless you all. We will talk to you again very soon, so stay tuned for more, folks.